Uh, start pull back, get that back where you wherever you're going to sit. And let me t- and dude, I'm doing research, man. What are you doing research <clears throat> for? For the word of the day? Uh, no, for a merit badge. Oh, I got an idea of one. I just have to find a merit badge that goes with it. Oh, I think I found one. Eh, it's kind of a loose connection. You're a loose connection, dude. You're dumb. <laughs> Can't be mean to me, it's my birthday. Two guys, one podcast. I am the lowest common denominator. What do you want? I lose more and more respect for you every time we do this show. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. The Sodom and Gomorrah yeah, podcast. Yeah, yes. I just turned it sideways, meet Tom Standstill. You may be the convergence of some sort of Catanic force. <laughs> Did it sound sexy though? Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. It's not even my birthday yet. I claim it like I'm a fucking girl or something. It's what happens when you get presents early. That's the truth. I got a lot of presents, dude. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this is the podcast. And this is my motherfucking birthday. Well, it's not technically my birthday, but we're recording it on Thursday. Friday is technically my birthday. We're not going to record on Friday, so we're going to talk about it now. This will be played on Sunday, which also won't be my birthday, but we're not going to uh, expose an episode or publish an episode. Probably not expose. Maybe we do expose our podcast. Anyway, we're not going to put out a new episode on my birthday on Friday. So this is my birthday podcast. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. You snuck that in. I didn't know you brought it. I did. You didn't, did you? No, that's wonderful. It's been in my pocket forever. That's fucking wonderful. Man, you guys... You guys know how to treat me good, dude. So, first off, a little bit of house cleaning. I want to get this right up off the top. I bought myself a motherfucking car today. Woo woo! I did. I got a 2012 Chevy Sonic. Chevy, where's the uh, where's the endorsement dollars? Come on, man, come through. I'm loving your car. I'll talk about it on the podcast. Maybe you pay me not to talk about it on the podcast. Perhaps whatever. Anyway. Uh, it's a delightful little hatchback. I've been calling it my sexy soccer dad car. Here's, here's what's funny. Uh, when you, when you first told me that you're getting a new car, that's almost exactly the type of car that I pictured you were getting. It has to be like, what, what have I been complaining about? I've been driving a Toyota Camry, which is a fine vehicle, but mine was quite old. I've been driving it for a long time. It was my ex-wife's car and it wasn't even a car that she picked out. Her father bought a car and brought it home and gave it to her. And then, like a year later, we got married. And so, through a transition of vehicles, I, we got a new one for her. I ended up with somebody else's car. And it's been fine. It's gotten me up and down the road. But I never loved it. You know what I mean? It was really more car than I needed. It was fine as far as the sedan, but it was, it's was it got a long hood and a long trunk as far as the new stylings. You know, I needed something with better gas mileage. I needed something with plenty of room for me and the boys in the car. I needed something that was fun and sporty and well, it had some tech in it, man. And mine does. Mine's full of shit. It's got Bluetooth everything and OnStar satellite connection and all sorts of gizmos and gadgets and bells and buttons and whistles. And God damn it, it's mine. And I'm so fucking excited, man. It's the first new car I've ever purchased myself. Congratulations. It's a big day. I, f- I really do feel like I've got like my big boy underwear on today or something. Yeah, you know? dude. You were, you're pretty stoked. Yeah. Uh, so that happened, which already made the day a great one. But then... I come over, Honey Bun's calling me. She's like, where are you and what are you doing? I'm like, I'm finishing up at the dealership and I got paperwork or whatever. She's like, okay, well, come over because other guy and Mrs. Other Guy want to see the car. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll meet you guys at the house. Uh, at this point, by the way, I didn't know you'd gotten the car. Really? Yeah, I didn't know until I Well, now that I think you. about it, her text message was only, I thought I had texted you earlier today and said, hey, it's done. You know, I got it. But I guess I hadn't afterwards anyway. Yeah. And I've, yeah, yeah weird. exactly. Because you said when I didn't know when you were getting off. Well, I knew you had a busy day at work, so I wasn't I wasn't trying to bother you much today anyway. But um, so yeah, Honeybun says come over, come hang out. They all want to see the car and stuff before you guys record tonight. And I was like, yeah, awesome. I get there, I don't even see it for like the first ten minutes I'm in the house. Mrs. Other Guy and Honeybun have put together a gigantic fucking basket, and we'll post it on our Facebook page later. The picture of it, um, a gigantic fucking basket with goodies in it man snacks that you and i like and like uh, just all sorts of little stuff and and up on the top uh, mrs other guy giving you a little a little kicker 
a fucking RC helicopter, dude. Yeah. Uh, and then the card. And that bitch better have. <laughs> that bitch better have. The card said uh, two guys, and then you open it up. And uh, and it's in honor of our twentieth episode. You know, well, you congratulations on your twentieth episode or something like that. And this is our tw- twenty times we've sat in the room and done this. Twenty weeks now. I haven't done anything for twenty weeks in a row, really, in my life. I don't think. I'm not even going to acknowledge it. <laughs> well, I'm. I I think it's a confluence of uh, a congruence, a confluence. A, it's a bunch of good events all piled on top of each other. That's what this week is. It's a good week. So. The ladies got us some nice things. They got us some goodies, and that was awesome. Yeah. See, and you guys thought it was super cool that uh, this other guy got me the RC helicopter. It's badass. No, here's the deal. So our nephew had a birthday like, I don't know, two weeks ago, something like that. Yeah, two, three weeks. So two or three weeks ago, and so we're shopping for him a gift. And, you know, he's he's a young kid, so we're looking, you know, in the toy section, the kitty section. And we come across these helicopters. He's too young to have one. Oh, but man, I want one so bad, man. I see it. I just want to play with it. I want to fly it around the house. You know, I want to. I want to chase my dogs with it. And I didn't have to. I could have just got it. Instead, I ask her. I'm like, "Hey, baby, do you mind if I get this?" And she tells me no. She tells me no. And I got irate. I was pissed. Yeah. You I complained were- to you about it. Later in the day. In, like, ad nauseum. Like, I heard about it not just, like, you complained about it at the party. You were like, you know what this bitch did just a minute ago? Let me tell you. I was so mad. And it's and here's the deal. It's not, it wasn't just that she said no. What really infuriated you is that you are such a generous guy when she comes to you with those kinds of things. She's like, baby, what about this new purse? Yeah. Yes. I almost always, almost hey, always say yes. Can I get this dress? Yes. I've heard the phone conversations. It's like, well, I don't know. How much does it cost? Yeah. Oh, baby. Yeah, you got your limits way more. Anything under this, you don't even really have to bother me about. You say that a lot. Like, you're like, right. yeah, that's trivial. Don't worry about it. Yeah, just do something nice for yourself. Excellent. And it's not like you're throwing money away. But you got, I'm, she gets nice things. You get nice things. It's a nice life. You do well. There's no reason not to. So out of the blue, all of a sudden, she's like, no, you can't get that RC helicopter. Yes. Like what the fuck? <laughs> exactly. I was, I was in fear because I didn't. I didn't have to ask. I could have just got the motherfucker and not said anything, and she wouldn't have said a word. She wouldn't have said anything. She would have been cool with it. But I thought I was gonna. I was gonna be nice and ask, and she shut me down. <sighs> but the end of that story is this: a couple of weeks later, she wanted to do something sweet for you. So what did she do? She got me the helicopter in the basket. Put it on a pile of goodies. I think it was awesome. I think it was awesome. Maybe. So last episode was perhaps not our best. I stand by my work. <laughs> um, you were on cold medicine, and I was—I don't know what something had hit me in the head that day. I was a—I was a stumbling, bumbling idiot. We pulled together an episode though. You told me I I tried to walk out of the studio. I was like, let's stop recording. This is really bad, and we should just not do it. I d- we discussed a greatest hits episode. Like I'd pieced together something from several other episodes. You were like, yeah, that's stupid. You just we'll sit here and we'll do it, and you'll put whatever we we have out, and it'll work or it won't work, and it'll be fine. It worked. It worked absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with last episode. Yeah, I mean, my expectation of putting something out isn't very high. <laughs> Like, I think most of it's crap anyway. You're not, you're not trying real hard, huh? Oh, no, I'm trying. I just don't think I'm very good at it. I don't think that's the case, and I don't think a lot of other people don't think that's the case. We've had a couple of good weeks here in a row of downloads. We appreciate all the new listeners. Welcome aboard. There are billions of people on this planet. And we have a very, 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 very infinitesimally small slice of them currently listening to us. So how do I know that that small slice isn't also as douchebaggy as we are. <laughs> but here's the deal. If if the number of people that are as douchebaggy as you are is large enough, then it doesn't really matter anymore. You got your own little tribe. You can just be douchebags together. King douchebag. <laughs> Kneel before me. I There's a story. Well, I tell you what. First off, you've got a word of the day, don't you? I do have a word of the day. Excellent. 
Today's UrbanDictionary.com word of the day. I found this one on UrbanDictionary.com, and I liked it because it's something that my wife hates. She complains about it just about every time she's going through Facebook. Lonely booking, all one word. Adding status updates to Facebook constantly because no one is paying attention to you. Also, being alone in one's room in a house full of people, feeling lonely, and appealing to the Facebook to feel validated. <laughs> Example. Earlier tonight when I was in the kitchen, <laughs> Facebooking the details of my birthday party as opposed to sitting, sitting there with there the people that were the enjoying party. Yes, yeah. you were lonely booking. <laughs> yes. That's exactly what you were doing. Oh. So, example. Okay. Crap sauce. John has texted me three times and updated his status six. He must be lonely booking again. <laughs> example number two. I talked to him. If he didn't lonely book all the time, it's so <laughs> annoying. Huh. I'm I'm guilty of this often. Yeah, I think it's a word uh that has a possibility to be worked in but not obvious. Uh it's not gonna be an easy one to do unless we're talking about me. I mean I say that. That's no, right, there'll be opportunities about, for it. Yeah, I think I think there is. I wanted to do uh a little who are these guys this week. All right. Why don't we ever use the who are you? The who yeah. are you? Who, 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 yeah, why don't we ever? We never use that for this segment. Um, actually, we I've got an even better one that one groupie sent in. Oh, yeah? Yes. There's a song. Have you ever seen Grease 2? Yes. Motorcycle Guy is yes. in Grease 2. Yes. Okay. Uh, the, the Australian, so the male version of Sandy, pretty much. Effectively, right. what they do in Grease 2 is, if, for those who haven't seen it, spoiler, spoiler, they flip the gender roles from Grease 1. They make the nerdy, uptight, very conventional, traditional Australian the male, and then it's kind of not trashy, but a looser, more experienced woman played by Michelle Pfeiffer, right? Yeah. Yeah. And she's got the like the cool rider song where she humps the ladder <laughs> on the set of the like the stage or whatever. They're preparing for the dance. It's very strange. There's a scene in that movie though where his moment where he gets all trashed up, where the where the uptight Australian gets all trashed up, what he does to do that is become cool motorcycle guy. Yeah. He's wearing a helmet, woom, woom, runs right through the middle of all the toughs and the greasers and whatnot there, and, and the crowd begins to sing, who, who's that guy? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. nice. It's pretty awesome. So anyway, that's going to be the new theme song for this, and you'll hear it right now. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. So, what I was thinking about this week, you and I were friends in college, but that's a pretty loose definition of friend. I mean, we knew each other. We were we, we were hung around this, each we other. We were in the same department. Yes, and it happened to be a department that had to be together a lot. Had to work together. Yeah, a lot. and partied together too. So, we, so we were we were together in social settings in a, on a regular basis as well. Mm, yeah, not a ton. Right. And here's 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 what was absolutely not true. You and I never hung out alone. Not a single time. Not once. Yes. Okay. We both uh, move on with our lives, careers, we get married, et cetera, et cetera. I move away for a while. I move back. I didn't even know you'd moved away. Yeah, exactly. Well, and see, and well, you moved, moved away, away for a while, and yeah. I didn't know that either. We get back, and you and I began hanging out mostly about Game, Game of Thrones. That's how it started. You kept inviting me over to the house. You're like, you should come by the house, man. Hang out with me and the wife. Got this new place. It's awesome. Game of Thrones is going to start. You should watch this show. It's really cool. You talk so much about it. Uh, through mutual friends, like well, our mutual friend, we were hanging out yeah. with him. The two of us were hanging out with him, and you were like, "Yeah, yeah, it's really good. You'll love it." I watched the first episode by myself and liked it so much. I was like, "I don't have HBO, but the other guy does. I should go hang out with the other guy. He keeps telling me I can." Okay, let's do that. I always felt weird, like as the single guy again. Like I was, 
I wasn't even divorced at the time. I was just separated. Coming and hanging out with married people, whatever. Anyway. But my wife's a real cool chick, though. She is. She is. Like, she and I knew to that. People over. Yes, yes. But it, I don't, it's just until you realize that there's a comfort on all parties' level, you don't want to overstep your bounds kind of deal, you know? One day I got a text message from you, though, that made me decide, yeah, that's the dude I need to hang out with on a more regular basis. You were in a, you were in a bit of a bind. All right. This is um, middle of the afternoon, about a year and a half ago. All right. From the other guy. I'm on the shitter and, and a book's a million. Just notice they don't have any TP. Options? Question mark. This was the first text message I'd received from you other than, hey, I'm headed over to our mutual friend's house. Are you going to be there at this time or that time? Or like, you should come by. We're going to have a barbecue, blah, 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 whatever. You never... We did not talk randomly at this point. Right. This is the first text message I get from you. I'm a little I'm a little ag- I'm a little aggravated that you brought that story up, to be honest. Really? Yes. Well, we don't have to talk about it then. No, 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 no. Only in the fact that that was going to be the story that I used for the Man Scout badge tonight. Oh shit. Well, great minds thinking alike, though. That's fucking funny. Yeah, man. that's what I was. Uh... Well, okay, we'll we'll go through the story. We'll tell the story, and then we can move right into man scouting. Because I earn, I earn a man in the story. I earn a man scout badge. That's fantastic. So I'm, I'm. It's the middle of the work day. Uh, it was two fifty eight when I got that, so I was just getting back to the office from my lunch break. I'm on the shitter in a books a million. Just notice they don't have any TP <laughs> options? Question mark. Um. First off, let me tell you that's there. There are few worse feelings of doom than that. Here's what here's what I don't know. On my end, I think why did the other guy appeal to me in this moment? What is it about me that he thinks I will have all of the answers for this particular situation? What I didn't know was. I wasn't the only one you sent the text message oh, to. Oh, no. I, I decided to up the odds that I would get a good answer, and, and I text probably five or six people the same question. That's awesome. Oddly enough, one of the other people I sent that text to was that guy. Really? Yeah, I sent it to oh, him. That makes sense. And I think he, he had the best answer to it. His was pretty fantastic, if I recall. He I said, don't remember his exactly. He said, dude, you are in a place with literally... A million books with literally millions and millions of pages. Any paper is toilet paper when you need it. Any any paper is toilet paper with shit on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'll agree that one. That one probably one ups mine. I I texted back once I finally put my head together and decided, will he? This might actually be a real situation that he's in, and he might need some help. Yeah, it was. I'd say go with socks first, undershirt next, underwear after that, as necessary and available, to which you very quickly answer back, not wearing any of those. <laughs> yeah, because we, we didn't know a lot about each other then, right. but I tend to not wear underwear. I don't. I like going commando. Not I was also wearing flip-flops, of which I do not wear socks with flip-flops. And I rarely wear an undershirt. I mean, I was in a t-shirt. <laughs> right. Right. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, I say, <laughs> you know I'm going to blog this, right? Names expunged, of course. Right there, you gave me the first. This is what this is. This is the conversation that led to this podcast. Because right here, this is you the give me permission. This is our you genesis. give me permission to share our ridiculous relationship. That was in its genesis right here. So after you tell me that you don't have the undershirt, you don't have any underwear, and you don't have any socks on, I say, all right, use your shirt and walk straight to your fucking car when you get done. The <laughs> workers will think it was some homeless person. Yeah. Remember, like the Godfather scene with Michael in the restaurant, don't look anybody in the eye, but don't look away either. I just picture myself walking through Books a Million shirtless, staring intently in front of me like it's everything's okay. I'm keeping calm and carrying on. Uh, and in my head, I even imagined like that you would hold the shitty shirt, just <laughs> like, like you take it with me, and like, and like halfway, <laughs> no, no, like halfway through the store, just you look drop at me it. wrong, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 the store, you drop it. 
I mean, the this first was, person to ask me why I don't have a shirt on is getting a face full of shitty shirts. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's exactly what Michael does. Well, like Clemenza <laughs> tells him, like you just just put your hands to your side and drop the gun, right, and then walk the fuck out. Don't look anybody in the eye, but don't look away either. That's exactly what he says. And what does Michael do? He shoots the guy and then holds his hand out for the longest time, and then walks halfway through the restaurant before he finally remembers to put his hand down and drop the gun. That's exactly what I envisioned happened. Like, you wipe your ass with your shirt, and then you're so amazed that you've wiped your ass with, with a nice shirt. I am shirt. all that is mad. And I'm about to walk out of this store shirtless. You don't remember to put it. You're like, well, I can't put it in the toilet. Well, I don't want to yeah. put it in the trash can. What yeah. do I fucking do with this shirt? And then halfway through the store, you're like, I'm not, I'm not carrying this shitty shirt in my car. I'm leaving it here. Yeah. It's, that so, did not happen. No, that didn't happen. That's not the road you took. You just say, this, You answer back. I'm going to wait it out. I'm sure someone will have to come in to pee soon. I'll just ask them for their socks. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking idiot I was. What What I love is it doesn't even, it's not even in your mind. I could ask them to go and find toilet paper. <laughs> I could ask them to hand me a paper towel. Although I think that bathroom has... A blow dryer and no paper towels. I uh, think no, you'd be out of paper towels. It, oh. it does have paper towels. <laughs> I'll ask them for their socks. <laughs> I'll ask them to steal me a book and let me wipe <laughs> yeah, my ass with the yeah. pages. No, I'll ask them for their <laughs> socks. The socks, yeah. To which I replied, brilliant. Beware of hemorrhoids. <laughs> yeah. Um, you finally send me a text message back. This is almost 30 minutes later, by the way. A guy just walked in. I, I asked him for his and then explained the issue. He offered some paper towels. I took the offer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here's the deal. It, mm-hmm. At that point, it didn't matter. Really didn't matter at that point. W- uh, what do you mean? <laughs> if he had said no? Yeah, or- because just trust me on this. Take a dump and sit there for 30 minutes. <laughs> It, you're, 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 at that point, you don't. There's no way to win. I don't care how many paper towels the guy handed me. He needed to moisten them first, is what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what you're saying is you still end up driving home with a dirty hat. Yeah, like there's no like. <laughs> oh my god. Now, here's here's the deal. Here's the deal. Before we go any further. All right. Now that we've talked through this story, yes. I realize I did not get this merit badge. No? No. Uh-oh. I I had my head go. We already talked about it. I was going to use this story. It was a near miss though. Yeah, because I thought um what I have a story that can relate to that man scout badge. Right. So here it is. I did not get it in that last story. Okay. Pulp and paper badge. So you make your own paper. If you're a Boy Scout, you make your own paper, learn that process, maybe put together a little journal or something with that paper, and you get your pulp and paper badge. Right. I thought for that story that that is the perfect badge. like Because that's not the only situation. I mean, you've found yourself in situations without toilet paper before. Wipe your ass with a leaf. Wipe your ass with a uh, magazine. Yeah. Glossy does not do any good. Yeah. So anytime you get that badge, anytime you find yourself without the essential. You have to improvise TP. Yes. It's it's uh, it's kind of the three seashells badge. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. But it's the, it's the pulp it's and the paper. the pulp and paper. Man Scout badge. That's, uh, that's, that's maybe my favorite Man Scout badge thus far. Yeah, I thought it because I thought I was thinking about that story. Oddly enough, pulp and paper badge. I needed toilet paper this one time. It fits. Trying to think what's the strangest thing that I've ever wiped my ass with. I've I've gotten my pulp and paper badge m- several times over. I, first of all, I have shat in the woods, so I have used leaves before. Yep. Although my dad, since before I can remember, has always carried a roll of toilet paper in his truck. Smart man. Squeezed, you know, he, he yeah. breaks the the. Uh, stuff in the middle or whatever and then it's like shoves it in between his dash and his window (laughs) yeah it blows his nose wipes his ass whatever he needs to do with some toilet paper use it for you know improvised earplugs uh, earplugs if you want to go out and shoot your guns whatever uh so i've also used regular toilet paper in the woods on a on the spur of the moment too well this isn't my story but i'm going to tell it because it's as good as yours what should i call it 
Who? I think I'm going to call him by. No, I can't. I can't tell that. I got a story about Mr. Professor, but I can't tell. Oh him without his say-so. yeah. Do you do you know this story? Do you know the shit story for Mr. Professor? No, I blue jacket. I have one story of Mr. Professor uh, that we tell just about all the just about every time you, me, and him and our holiday friend oh. get together. It generally it it comes up. Yeah. The hair story. No, no, no. Here's the quote. Oh. If she going home with me, she going to get fucked. Um, Who I, says that? Mr. Professor. Yeah. <laughs> I talked to him. Well, he doesn't anymore. He's a, he's a settled family man. He was, a, it had, he, was, he was not talking about a beautiful woman. No. <laughs> he wasn't talking about an attractive woman. No. Dude wasn't even talking about an ugly woman. This woman was homely. Hideous. Yeah. yeah. It was a two-bagger at least. Oof. I talked to Mr. Professor the other day about doing the show. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, some Wednesday night when he's on the air, he like he's on the air sometimes until like 5. Yeah. What we'd need to do, we'll hit him early. Uh, ahead of time, we'll be like, hey, this week, what about we get together and, you're, and you can come in? And then he'll just hang around a little late. We'll record early that night. We can get him on the show sometime. Deal. Yeah. Uh, I asked, I talked to him about that the other day. Yeah. No, I'll I'll save Mr. Professor's shit story and make sure that he wants me to share that with the public. Let's share it with him because I want to see live reaction. Yeah. Well, and, and the other thing is, unlike you, he is a public figure, and I'm sure he wants to claim himself and use his Twitter account. His Twitter is at Mr. Professor, I think. Anyway. He's going to be a public – people will know who he is or if they want to look him up or whatever. And so I don't want to tell uh, uh, too embarrassing a story without his approval. And you're right. It would be much better to let him tell it, truthfully. It's a great one, though. So there, there, there is a future revisiting of this Man Scout badge. I'll just say if off the top of my head, the strangest thing I've ever, I've ever used to wipe my ass – is a five-year-old. <laughs> no, come, come stand here, son. No, although, although, let me tell you, anybody that's had kids, they've got lots of random cleaning up poop with with different things. Story, you catch poop in a lot of things if you have to on a spur of a moment. Uh, the wax paper cups, the cone paper cups that come uh, on like a cooler. We, yeah, here, here's the deal. I, we need to. I don't need that visual. Of me wiping my ass with, with a cone? A, with a cone. I well, I <laughs> tore the cone. If you break it down, it's a long sheet of paper, and you can kind of keep your hand clean. It's good stuff. The wax, though, like the glossy magazine, it doesn't work that well. I'm not going to be able to eat for a week. <laughs> Whatever. We'll leave the studio. Thanks, get, a-hole. you get munchies again. It is my birthday. Well, you've already said that. This is... Yes, I know. This is kind of a, a uh, who are these guys, too, but a little cleaner. What was your best birthday? What was your favorite birthday? Uh, the reason I ask this question, I, I'm talking to son number one the other day on the ride home from school, and we're going to see my mom that night for my birthday. We were going to have dinner for my birthday. And uh, I'm telling him, hey, we're going to do this. And he's like, it's your birthday? Wow, how old are you? I was like, well, how old do you think I am? 20. He guessed 26. Yeah. I was like, that's actually pretty close. Word, man. I was like, no, daddy's 31. You're like, how old's mommy? And he's like, 47. Yeah, no. You're like, that's right. That's, that's good. right. That's it's very good. good. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I was, uh, well, so I told him that's I was, a sneak. That's a sneaky way to piss off the ex wife. Yeah, like man. sneak it in, make him tell yeah. him, you know, mommy is 40 this year. Yeah. <laughs> that's horrible. So he asked me, he said, How old are you? I said, Well, how old do you think I am? 26. I was like, That's pretty close, babe. Well, I was 26 when you were born. How about that? How about that? He's like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, he said, I'm going to be five on my next birthday, and then I'll be six, and then seven, and then eight. And I was like, that's awesome, man. What do you think the best birthday is? And he was like, mm, 10 probably. <laughs> that's as good as it gets. He's right. I've thought about it a lot since yeah. then, dude. It 10 is maybe the perfect age. I don't think I had to mow the yard at 10. Nope. I don't think I – I mean, I did laundry, took out the trash, stuff like that. But you don't have any real chores right. or responsibilities. You don't have a job. Nope. You are old enough, though, to go play by yourself, yep. all alone, go out of the house, go down the street, whatever. It's fine. Ride your bike. Yeah. 10 might be the most free you ever are. 10's real good. A kid's got it figured out, man. He's five years old. He's he's, he's having a midlife crisis. <laughs> right right now? Like, oh, this is as good as it's ever going to yeah. get. 
I got to tell you this, man. Thirty one's been pretty good so far. Uh, I don't. You haven't even got technically. You, yeah, I haven't gotten there. You haven't even got there. So uh, thirty ended real good, is what you're saying. Yes, thirty is ending on a high note. Thirty yeah. started on a good note, though. The, my thirtieth year has been a fantastic one. I, I don't know what my best birthday. What's yours? Do you uh, have one? It's not even my. Yeah, but it's not my birthday. Okay, that's the best birthday. It was my little brother's birthday, and we were all fairly young. I mean, he must have been six, maybe right. somewhere around there. Give a year, take a year, and we we grew up. Fairly poor, like like poverty, like extremely poor. Borderline poverty line. No, it, it, we it wasn't borderline. We were. You were. All right. Yeah, yeah we we were hard scrabble. Yes, we we <laughs> grew up uh, all the way till uh, pretty much high school, d- junior high. Uh, we were we were extremely poor, and so it was my brother's birthday. Uh, he didn't. My parents didn't have any money, uh, so no no gifts really. I mean, not even not even a cake. Wow. Um, but my mom had found enough things in the house that she was able to make one cupcake. And so she actually made one, one cupcake. And this is, this is, there was three of us, my, my older sister, me and my little brother. And this is, we had, like, I can, I can go get a Coke anytime I want a Coke. Yeah. Then, I mean, it may have been once a month. Like it was a big fucking deal to get a soft drink. I mean, that's how bad off we were. Um, so for him to, to get that one cupcake and know that that, that one, there was only one, it was all for him, man. And that was it. That was it. And he, I wasn't getting anything. Brandy wasn't getting a cup. Uh, my sister wasn't getting a cupcake and it was all for him, man. Uh, and that's all, that's all he got, dude. That is every, that is, that was it for his birthday. It's, um, and my mom lit the candle for it and he blew it out and he just looked up at her and he was like, Thanks, Mom. That level of deep, deep gratitude for something so small, man, it's stuck with me since then. That's pretty badass. Yeah. That's a great story, dude. It's the widow's mite. Like like the, the, the parable that Jesus tells, the widow comes and gives the literally a mite. It's less than a, than a penny. She puts that in the offering plate, whereas the rich man had come and thrown jewels and gold and everything, that you know, yeah. all this stuff in there. She gave all she had. Yeah. That's pretty badass, man. So it's uh, awesome. So my favorite birthday memory, it's not even my birthday, it's his. That's a really good one though. That's yeah. a really good one. Yeah, I don't have any stories nearly as good to tell that. I feel bad now about all of that. <laughs> nice things. <laughs> Sorry. I'll be at home lonely booking about my happiness. God damn it. Boom! Boom! I think that might be my first word of the day win. No, I've gotten one before. That's my yeah, second Yeah, it was one. after the week. Yeah, it was, but you got that one like a whole week later. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. That one didn't really count. Man, that, one's that was excellent. Ah, oh, man. Have you been Stuck thinking about the landing. it? landing. No, it just came to me. It just came to me. I completely forgot we'd even done a word of the day. This is bullshit. That's, well, that's what happens with the word of the day. It's tricky. It sneaks up on you a little bit. You're yeah. like, I don't know about all of them. Oh, hey, hey, there's news. Look at that. Oh, yeah. And then it was good, in the ass. It was good. Congratulations. Thanks, man. I'll put it on the dollar. All right. You have one to my three. <coughs> not that not that, you know, we're keeping <coughs> score. Not that we're keeping score. So we got some listener mail. The mail. The mail is here. The mail's here. Ooh. Um Eagle Joe chimed in. Eaglet Joe. Eaglet Joe, yes. I was very excited to hear this. This was on Monday night. The Falcons just created a friend barrier on Monday Night Football because Matt Ryan had a wardrobe malfunction. When? That's awesome. How about that, man? I didn't, I didn't see it. Day. I know. Uh, I thought that was pretty... Man, that's ex- yeah, that's exactly what happened. Pretty cool. Friend barrier was our word of the day from episode seven, this, that, and the other, when we were joined by that guy. We got to get him back in the studio sometime, too. We got to record on weekends, though, to get him, right? All right. Uh, this is from... Cronkite posted to uh, our Facebook page. Cronkite begins, nerd alert, Wolverine. He's obviously talking about you. No, this is, he's a, he was alerting about, about what he's about to say. Wolverine and Lobo fought in a crossover event between DC and Marvel, and Marvel Comics. Bam! Characters from both companies uh, fought for survival. In some fights, DC would let one of their bigger guys fall to a major Marvel guy and vice versa in a trade. They literally negotiated it ahead of time. He's, so 
like, well, this Superman has to win, so Spider Man has to win, but Captain America uh, pa- can lose. Part of it, part of it, it was the you, you got to vote. By the way, the fans, the comic book, got to vote. Well, that's 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 what he goes on. He says uh, a few of the fights were even done by fan vote, and Wolverine was one of them, having a far larger fan base than. Lobo, he won. He got the nod. It kind of defies logic for a few reasons that you can just avoid reading if you'd like to stop here, but we're going to go into them. Um, First, Lobo has been able to go toe-to-toe with Superman more than a few times. While unable to win, he can hold his own. There's no way that Wolverine could handle that kind of power. That's what I asked last week. Second, Lobo can regenerate so long as he has a single drop of blood intact. While Wolverine's healing factor is very powerful, it's not that powerful. He would have to utterly obliterate a rampaging, super strong, super resilient space titan right out of existence. So it didn't make a whole lot of sense. That said, I'm lucky that I'm already married because the, this post was lame enough to justifiably earn me pariah status from the opposite sex for the rest of my life. That's awesome. I said, and uh, I replied, and we're so glad you took the fall so we don't have to. Thanks for the info. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with Cronkite. Lobo would smoke the shit out of Wolverine. As a as a big Wolverine fan, as an, and and as the dude who chose Wolverine last week, you're a hundred percent right. Like, I mean, I I don't like Superman more than Wolverine, but if they fought, Superman would fucking melt him with his laser eyes. That's very simple. Yeah. yeah and Lobo Lobo would punch him into non-existence. And I kind of like uh, I kind of like Lobo's lifestyle compared to Wolverine's. I ain't even trying to be part of a team. It's all about me. I do what I want. I killed my entire fucking planet, in yeah. fact. Dunskies. I I do like alone time. I don't like it that much. That's what I love about Wolverine. Like He's got the great love, but it's a tragic love. And I know, there's like I four like, of them. I feel like when Lobo walks to a bar, some alien chick just starts sucking his dick. <sighs> if Wolverine walks in a bar, that just doesn't happen. I don't know. I think Wolverine probably gets plenty of tail. He tends, though, to screw the chicks that then, like, stab him while he's sleeping. That's really Wolverine's M.O. He screws a lot of femme fatales. That's not such a good thing, I suppose. Huh. I You may be winning me over. I'll have to do more research. <laughs> Deal. All right. So uh, that's listener mail. You can always get in. Your info on the show. If, hey, if you want us to talk about you or some shit you want us to talk about, you got to email us two guys one pod at me dot com two guys one pod all spelled out no numbers in there at me dot com two guys one pod at me dot com two guys one pod dot com is the website too. You can listen to us. You can watch videos. You can even uh, click the support link up at the top. Buy stuff on Amazon dot com and support two guys one pod while you're doing it. Um, we've got a PayPal link there too. If you just feel like throwing us new bucks, you want to help pay my car note, hit me up. Woot. Nice. It's a little personal plug there. It's just for me. Nice. A couple of days ago, I, th- I thought of, and if you could. Excellent. And the thought went, man, I, I kind of want to come up with the, if you could this week. And then I thought about it, thought about it, thought about it. And I came up with a good one. All right. And after I came up with a good one, I immediately thought, dude, make a note of this. Like, write this down so you don't forget. Followed by the thought, nah, I'm going to remember it. And if I don't, then it wasn't good enough for the show anyway. And you don't remember. And I think it is good enough for the show. I don't remember it. That's a shame, dude. you got to write notes. You got Because here's the deal. Write the notes, even the bad ideas. You can always delete a bad idea. You cannot record a an unrecorded idea. You know? You can't... You can't yeah, anyway, write notes. I write notes about everything. I do have an if you could, though. All right. I ran this one by Honey Bun earlier. Uh, not earlier, the other, the other night. If you could quantum leap back into any point in your past, but you then have to relive from that point in real time, when would you jump? <laughs> what point in your life would you choose? So here's the deal. If 10 is the best age, for instance, you can't just automatically say 10 because then you got to live through... 11 and 12 and 14 and all the way up. You have to relive all of it over again? Yeah. Um, so, like, if last week was awesome, that's the good one. You just jump back into last week and be like, woohoo, and then you don't have to go through any shit because you're right here again. All right. This is a hard one for me. I mean, I, I had a lot of fun when I was little, but, I, yeah, I don't want to live through my – Do you? But do you still – I mean, do you have to – you get to re – do you get to change anything? Yeah. Do you, you know what you it know all. now? Yes. You are you. 
and you've got all your memories of how it was and how it ends up being, and yeah, you can alter shit. You can make different choices all hmm. along the way. Now, w- one of the things that makes me a little nervous, I largely like the way that things have turned out. You know, like it's not the life that I imagined at 15, for instance, but it's a really good life. I'm very happy with where I am and my future looks bright and I've got two beautiful kids and I got a lot of good friends around me and I got a job that I like and a fun show that we do. It's a good place. I would, I'd be scared that I would, like I might, if I go too far back, I might be terrified that I would change something so I would end up changing something inadvertently. You know? I would I would go back to like four or five is what I would jump back to. All right. Because if I still knew everything I knew da- knew now, I would be plugged as this fucking genius baby, right? So you started talking at six as soon as your as soon as your lips and tongue could make sounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would want to be uh, this genius baby, right? And then I could use my celebrity, right, to kind of better my family situation when I was young. Look at you. I right, tied it into the earlier story and everything. I like that. Yeah, and that's, al- altruistic. Yeah, that's what I would do. You're a much better dude than you think you are. And you know what's weird? I really believe that it might be exactly what you would do. I mean, that, that is what I would do. Why, why uh, is it? It would. Here's the deal, though. What what happens when you get to be like 16 and you're not a super smart 16 year old? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what, what, you're well, a genius why, baby. Right, right, but it's like this. I would keep learning things so i'm so far ahead so if i'm in kindergarten i'm not fucking painting inside some some lines you're going to college right so you're saying at six uh you could continue to devote yourself to To, studies it would be like you you got to go to college for so you would go to school for i mean you'd get to go to high school again and you'd be way better at it and then you would you would be yeah i I mean i guess you would but i'm saying you would peak out you wouldn't be oh yeah i mean i continue learning but yeah I, i mean I think at some point, all of a sudden, they'd go, well, well I mean, think about why this. didn't if I'm, you continue if I'm six, advancing? If I'm six or seven, I, I could literally have the mental capabilities and stuff to study to be a doctor. Un- unless, like, what if you just don't have the mental capabilities to be a doctor? Really? Well, I mean, I don't know. I've never gone to med school. Have you? No, but I think I, think I, I can think figure you- it out. <laughs> See, I'm not that confident. I really think that, I think that, there are certain things that even if I devoted myself – math, I think even if I really devoted myself to it, if I didn't have to go to work, if I didn't have to take care of the kids, if I could just sit in a room and be taught, if I could just take it in, I still don't think I'd be very good at higher level math. So I don't think I would ever get it. Um, I feel that pretty much everything outside of the art world, right? right. So I don't think – no amount of studying is going to make me a better painter. Right. It's not. But barring that – I don't think there's anything that I couldn't do, M- mentally, physically. If, if you just spend enough time. Yes, if I put my mind to it, and 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 devoted to that effort, I don't think there's a whole lot I, that I couldn't do. Huh? I know precisely when I would jump back, and I would be terrified about changing things in between because I do like where I am. I I jump back to my first summer doing theater. It was. We want to talk about freedom. We, we were talking about being 10 years old and how free that is. The first summer that I left college and went and did summer theater, you're around a bunch of reasonably good-looking, able-bodied late teens and early 20s. You act for a couple of hours at night. It, both the shows that we did were very physical, so like you danced or you fought or whatever. Yep. And then And then what? You just fucking sleep late and eat junk food and drink too much and and party with a bunch yeah. of like-minded people. It is like summer camp for grown-ups, man. Yeah, and here's the deal with with if you if anyone ever gets a chance to do summer stock. Uh it is not for people in relationships. Uh, no, sir. It's not. But for single people, it's delightful. It is amazing. <laughs> because generally you are on a 6-month, 3-month, 9-month, whatever the contract length is. So you're only around these people. People have to move from completely other states, thousands and thousands of miles away, and these are the people you get lumped in with. And and you you develop these when you're the only dude. And here's the other thing: is there are a lot of gay guys doing summer theater because most of them are musical. A lot of gay guys doing theater. Period. Right. So, with that being said, to a straight female, after nine months, I go from a four to an eight real quick. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I was the first summer I went. I was 
pretty chubby. I mean, I've always been a heavier guy until I lost weight recently, but I, I was not I was not in shape that first summer. The second summer, I was actually kind of lean and mean. I looked about like I do now. Uh, plenty of ladies were still interested in me. It's a small pool. It's a small yeah. pool to draw from. It's a lot of fun, man. A lot of fours. A lot of fours hooking up with a lot of seven, eights, and nines. That's right. That's right. It's a it's a uh, it's a uh, a buyer's market. Needs have got to be met. <laughs> um. And it's you know it's not just the sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It was a lot of fun. It was a great place up there. I, I worked in Ohio. It was a great place. The, like the physical location was great, but the set was great, and the crew was interesting. And it was just it's a really good place in my life. Uh, I, I had a lot of fun. I also had I, I've done work in the Midwest. It, it was great. I was around a lot of people. But I tell you what, dude, I dislike the Midwest. I don't know, like. I I have a fondness for Ohio, very specific places in Ohio. Like I wouldn't want to go live in Columbus, you know, but or Cleveland for that matter. I wouldn't want to live, fucking live in Cleveland either. But like did a, LeBron, a, yeah, <laughs> good call. Oh, it's too soon. There's a there's a little you know there's a little like a sixty mile radius in Ohio that if if, if you told me tomorrow uh, oh shit if I was gonna run away, that's exactly where I would go. I don't think. I don't think when you're a grown man, it's called running away. Yeah, it's but just I'm called saying, moving. Yeah, well, but what I mean is, like, if I was going to, like, like what are you? <laughs> I'm leaving this place. Yeah, if I was going to fake my death and, and like move away secretly, I guess I shouldn't have told people that because uh-huh. now you know where to look for me. <laughs> I love it. You still think that you got to run away? Well, I mean, you it, could. It's not people like I made. A, it's not like I made a grown ass man decision to move. How'd you end up here, dude? Fucking <laughs> right away. Oh, really? I mean, were your parents were your parents horrible? No, like I ran away like last week. I just didn't call anybody back. <laughs> that's all. That's all. <laughs> what an, uh, if a grown man came to me and said that he just ran away? I don't know what I would do. Well, but you're not. But here's the. I I think about if it. Like I, that if I if I ever run away, you know where to <clears> find <throat> me. Oh. I think about it that still because I got kids. Like it would be, I would be running away from home. No, and just not from my parents. I'd be running away from the dependents. You know, uh, I would term that as ad- abandoning uh, your children. Abandoning you didn't run children. away. You abandoned your children. Well, yeah, you moved. <laughs> Consequently, you abandoned your kids. Yeah, but don't sugarcoat I, it. If, it ain't running away. It's if, abandonment. If I made a statement like, if, yeah, if I were to abandon my kids, I'd go to <laughs> Central Ohio. <laughs> but that's the statement. That's the that truth. That sounds terrible. Yeah. If I if I were to run away, I'd go to Central Ohio. That sounds romantic. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. No? No. All right. My bad. Um, I think that's a show. 20 of them, in fact. Oh, wait. I want to talk about why I don't like the Midwest. Yeah. Well, what What didn't you like about it? Other than the fucking ABC stores. I didn't like that. Did they have that where, where you were? The, the, you had to go to like the state licensed place to get real alcohol? I don't remember. We had <laughs> we drank a lot of alcohol. I never asked where it came <laughs> drank from. Drank a lot. I didn't ask where it came from. <laughs> So no, I don't know. No, I don't like it because uh, one, filled with ugly people. The townies. I didn't yes. really deal with the townies much. Yes, though. townies are midwestern townies. Sorry, Midwest. I was specifically told not to mess with the townies because they had a habit of lying about how old they were. And they're ugly. <laughs> well, I was told because they lied about how old they were. I didn't. I didn't look close enough to see whether they were ugly. Yeah. So midwesterners are ugly, and they all look fucking miserable. All of them? Yeah, they look like it. they've just been rained on for 40 years. Like, they just look like shitty fucking people. Where, uh, Lake Wobegon's not supposed to be in the Midwest, is it? Is that? I don't know where the hell that is. It's the, you know, the Garrison Keeler tales from Lake Wobegon on NPR. The, the, what is it? What's the show? Prairie Home Companion? I don't know. You don't know what I'm talking about? No. <sighs> not Delma Story. All right, then. So, ugly women. Yes. And, and they look. Depressed. Yes. Put upon. So I'm in the grocery store, right? Like my first week of working in the Midwest. And literally there's this little girl just like having this conniption, just acting up, acting a fool. And her, what the deal was is she wanted a, this certain box of cereal and her mom's telling her no. Good right. on you. Way to, way to deny. I mean, it's a good thing. Stick by your guns. Tell them no. It's Handle okay. your business. Yeah. No problem with that. Good job. Way to be a mom. And the kid's just getting pissed. And the kid's like... Oh, you're so mean and blah, blah, blah. You're the meanest mom ever. And the mother has the audacity to say this following statement in public. Sorry, kid. You should have asked God for a nice mommy 
instead of a pretty one. I've Ooh. never heard a more false statement before in my life. This bitch could eat an apple through a tennis racket. You know what I'm saying? It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. <laughs> After being there a month, I realized she was right compared to the rest of the townies. Oh, my God. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, shit. I mean, she's got to be in the top 5% in this place. What a shitty thing to tell a kid anyway, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, should have asked God for a nice mommy. <laughs> instead, instead of, of a pretty, pretty one. First of all, you're admitting the kid's point that you're not a that you're a mean mommy. Yeah. Which I'm assuming you're not. Or you don't think you are anyway. If you thought if you think you're a mean mommy, then fucking change. <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, what a terrible thing to say. Coming from the horse's mouth, literally. <laughs> Now, that's a show. 20 of them, in fact. Yay! Blow my horn one more time. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Thank you for joining us at twoguysonepod.com. I wasn't blowing a horn. That's just the sound his dick makes when I suck it. That's not the truth at all. You're still on the other side of the table. Don't say nasty things like that. My mother listens to this show. It's my birthday, for God's sakes. Uh... Two guys, one pod.com. Look up the uh, the YouTube channel. You can watch the YouTube videos. New videos every Wednesday. I was late this week, but it did get out Wednesday night. Um, new episodes every Sunday. And thanks for joining us. Email us, two guys, one pod at me.com or visit the Facebook page, facebook.com slash two guys, one pod. That's all the internet stuff. And if you don't email us, you have to at least share us with five friends. Yeah, there you go. Do that. That's that would be awesome. Uh, it's it's and a punishment uh with a consummation devoutly to be wished. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this has been the podcast. Oh, one, two, three, four. While inside it's a summer's day While they're filling full their buckets Inside we enjoy the stay Pass me that guitar and we'll sing songs about the coast We're back flipping a pool of ice cream While outside they're preparing hopes Lashes in the evenings, I'm deep, deep in sand. Forget my fears, bring out my problems while holding on to my sweetheart's hand. Every day is a quick vacation from all the calm and drudgery. So build your castle next to mine and we'll stand at the top the balconies. It's sunny. Nothing. I'm the happiest when you're around You're everything when I got nothing You're the sun that I fall around It's sunnier when I'm with her You ready to go? Nope. You're not ready to go? Oh, yeah, you want to wait on the thing. I'm trying to make it less girl-oriented badges. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of them have been like... Oh, oh yeah, all of them have been get some chicks. Yeah. Yeah. Although I do have a, fun, a, a funny one I could do with a genealogy badge. If you sleep with someone from your family tree. <laughs> like like third cousin on your great aunt's side or whatever. That's terrible. Uh, there's a motorboating badge, but I think that's too easy. Wait a minute.
There's a real badge that's motorboating? Yeah, motorboating, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is too easy. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs>